Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Margaret Borick. I'm from the University of Zimbabwe in Harare. And I'm presenting, I have the honor of presenting these data on behalf of the uh, whole DEFT team as run out of the Kirby Institute in Australia. Uh, these data are the 48 week, uh, effectively preliminary data that were presented at the recent CROI meeting by Gail Matthews. Um, I ought to acknowledge at the outset that uh, DEFT comprises a huge team of people. Um, sadly, there are three people who um, were involved at the beginning of the study uh, who are no longer with us. Uh, my colleague James Hakim, uh, David Cooper from Kirby, and uh, Ernest Ekong, who was Nigeria, a Nigerian based at the um, Institute of Virology. So DEFT is the uh, Dolutegravir and Darunavir evaluation in adults failing first line uh, therapy in an RTI-based therapy. Um, I need to say a little bit about the history of DEFT. It was first conceived as a two-arm RCT utilizing one innovative simplified dual ART regimen versus standard of care, which was based on the WHO algorithm of uh, selected nucleosides, plus, uh, where there was no co-formulation co possible at the time, um, and where genotyping may or may not have been possible. And we commenced the study in April of 2017. Boosted darunavir with dolutegravir was the intervention arm at the time. So there were no nucleosides in that regimen and no genotyping required. And there was potential for co-formulation. Um, in response to the changing uh, therapeutic landscape and really after extensive stakeholder co um, consultation and additional funding, um, a third arm was actually added in. It was, this was based on the results of the dawning study, the rapid rollout of TLD globally, um, and eventually a, the, a second intervention arm was added, which was DTG plus um, either FTC or 3TC and tenofovir. So the importance of that is that the nucleosides were recycled, there was no genotyping that was required or dictated, and the drugs were co-formulated. Um, the study was designed basically to show non-inferiority, sorry, against standard of care in terms of the HIV RNA at 48 weeks um, using a delta of 12%. Um, because of the change in structure of the study, we had to increase the sample size from 610 in the first, uh, first stage of it to just over 1,000 in the second stage, so stage two. Um, and the data that I'm presenting is based on the analysis from patients who are in stage two. So what's important is the primary outcome um, on the left is a... Um, uh, figure showing basically the proportion of patients, and I'd like, I would concentrate on the stage two, who showed a viral load of less, of less than 50 at 48 weeks. Um, and on the right is the uh, comparison and the, the non-inferiority data, really, which you can see. The, the bottom um, the bottom diagram shows that basically uh, DTG with uh, TDF and XTC was non-inferior to standard of care therapy. And what's important possibly is the top uh, three lines, which shows that DTG with boosted darunavir was actually superior to um, standard of care um, that was used in the study. Um, because the study was an RCT, the groups were actually quite evenly balanced. I've not, I don't have the time to talk about key study eligibility or the recruitment process, but baseline characteristics were pretty much similar. Um, the study eventually was actually stopped at an enrollment of 831 uh, participants, really mostly for feasibility and applicability. Um, it was not a decision based on a DSMB recommendation. It was stopped late in December 2021. So importantly, the mean CD4 change at week 48 by study arm, and this is in stage two only participants, was that the CD4 gain to week 48 was in fact greater in both the DTG and boosted darunavir arm and in the DTG3TC, um, 
or F XTC antenophavir arm compared with uh, standard of care. Um, most patients had been on an efavirenz based regimen and uh, most patients, 76%, had been on an AZT backbone. The other important factor is the mean weight change, more worryingly perhaps, in stage two only, and the mean weight gain was definitely greater in the intervention arms, both the DTG booster Darunavir arm and in the DTG Tenofovir um, XTC arm. Um, this is obviously important in terms of moving forward. Um, there were 35 pregnancies to date on the study. 25 of those were in patients who were on dolutegravir. No congenital abnormalities were uh, detected in those patients. Um, so in summary then, the conclusions for the study and what's important pragmatically is firstly that we will be, we are continuing to follow patients out to 96 and then 144 weeks. Both intervention arms performed well, demonstrating non-inferiority against the current standard of care for second-line therapy in patients who'd been on first-line NNRTIs and who had failed treatment. The Darunavir booster Darunavir DTG combination also actually reached criteria for superiority. Um, and, and I think that this is important. Um, but from a programmatic point of view, the availability of TLD as a low-cost FDC is highly relevant um, moving forward. Uh, both intervention arms did demonstrate greater CD4, count, CD4 gains at uh, 48 weeks anyway compared to standard of care, but worryingly weight gain was significantly greater. Um, all arms were generally very well tolerated. Um, across the 14 sites um, globally, there was an extraordinary low list to, loss to follow up. I think seven patients withdrew and three patients were actually lost to follow up out of 831, which is um, an amazing uh, number. Um, and it's important to remember that we're watching patients for to 96 and 144 weeks. Um, it's important for me to acknowledge the, the, the huge team that was involved in the study across 14 sites, particularly our participants and particularly our community um, advisory board and our community participants. Um, I thank you for your attention. Thank you.